Um, today is Wednesday, October 6th. Um, we're starting at 12.07 p.m. here in the Elizabethtown College High Library. We have with us Dennis Hughes, um, a local photographer. He's going to talk to us about his photographs, particularly of the Amish. Um, my name is Rachel Grove Rohrbach, and I'm an archivist here at Elizabethtown College. And I'm joined by, I'll let you introduce yourself. I'm Emily Erdlin. Emily Erdlin. And Eric here. Schubert, a student uh, worker in the archives. Excellent. So we'll just go ahead and get started. Emily, do you want to go ahead and ask the first question? Okay. Um, we'd like to start with a few questions about your interest in the Amish in general. Um, and to start, can you recall when your interest in the Amish began? Yes. Um, I was actually a child, and uh, my family had located from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, when I was five years old, to the Belleville area, and we were there about five years. And uh, our neighbor owned a farm in the Reedsville area, close by, and my parents had a garden there on this property, which was Nebraska Amish that were farming it. So I met a young man, Amish, a boy my age, and uh, in the summer when we were out there gardening, I got to spend time with him a lot. And that was where my first connection with the Amish came for those five years until we came back to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, and just a more specific question. I know it's um, difficult to um, figure out concrete things about Amish children in public school. Um, was that still occurring at the time when you were in grade S school? Yes, some of it still was. Uh, however, I think basically the big change happened uh, in the 60s and then into the 70s with the uh, Yoder versus uh, in, in Wisconsin mm -hmm. where William Ball was the attorney and that all changed with about the eighth grade education. That's when I saw big changes uh, in the community it was about, uh, about 1971, 1972. So prior to that, did you have Amish classmates in school? Poor me. Did you have any Amish classmates in school? Uh, no. no, I went to okay. a, a public school and mostly in Lancaster City, okay. where I grew up, and then in, in the, the, the northern area for those five years when I started school, no Amish in my school system. Yeah, we talked a bit to Steve Nolt before we prepared our interview questions, and he wondered if you were still sure. mm -hmm. going to school with Amish kids. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and ask some questions. Uh, when and how did you begin to take photographs of the Amish? Well, I started uh, about uh, 1970s, highly interested in photography and did quite a bit of just fun photography, but always having an interest in the Amish. Um, I started photographing and saving those images in the, in the middle 80s, about 1982, 1985, and uh, started to have somewhat of a digital, or excuse me, a slide file, not digital, uh, back then, and uh, accumulated them and uh, attended a lot of Don's seminars here at the Young Center and uh, made a connection with Don on uh, some conversation. So that's basically when I, sh when I showed an interest in about 1985, yeah. Is that when you first started um, working with Don and getting to know him through Young Center seminars? Yes, started working with Don about that time. Uh, he, we talked about some images I had he might be interested in and made a connection. He came down to the house and we went through some things and then he started thinking of a process where he might be able to use them in his writings. And it just continued to move on over the years uh, after that f f initial meeting. Very good. Do you have a favorite category or type of photo uh, that you took that included the Amish? There are some. Uh, there was several that have been used in uh, publications. Uh, the the Tourist Bureau, Pennsylvania Tourist Bureau, used several years in a row of my images, and probably the first one of um, two Amish boys sitting on a fence with a sunset behind them was probably, uh, I got a lot of calls on people wanting to purchase that image, uh, and that was years ago. <laughs> Did you learn any interesting or surprising things as you took all these um, photos about the Amish community? Um, 
they're very, very keen on their uh, aggressiveness. Uh, certain people in their culture have that that knit to uh, to develop things that they see to continue on with making it better, making it work in their society. And over the years, I just am amazed at how many things that they have been able to develop and uh, market. Some of them even market to them. So and have patents. Uh, that they did on, and it, some of it has uh, been very, very good, not only for their society to move on, but for our society also. Can you think of an example of that type of innovation that you saw? Yes. Um, there was, when we were working, uh, Don and I, on Amish entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. uh, I got into so many businesses. And uh, I know there was one uh, called the Blue Flame, where the gentleman had taken kerosene uh, fuel and had put air pressure to it to get a bluer, brighter flame from kerosene, which is usually not quite that bright. And he used that in marketing products. And I understand they were not only marketed here, but all over the world, even in the Scandinavian countries, uh, would be one example. Uh, but there's so many uh, over the years that I ran into that were just uh, amazing to me what they could do and, and make a product better. They would see it, and how could we make it better? And they continued down that, that path. Um, so your photographs include Amish settlements outside of Lancaster County. Yes. Um, would you like to tell us about your experiences traveling to photograph the Amish in other yes. areas of Pennsylvania and around the country? Yes. Um, travel quite a bit, not, not on a daily basis at all, but um, I went to... Um, Steve Nolt was out in Goshen, Indiana, so I made three different trips out there to Goshen and photograph in the Indiana settlements uh, around Napney and Shipshawana area. Um, I was amazed at how progressive uh, the groups were in Indiana, with uh, particularly uh, working in industry compared to here in our area, especially in Lancaster County. So. Uh, they had uh, issues with uh, getting vacation that our f dairy farmers do not. Uh, they had uh, growth there that was um, more massive than we had here in Lancaster County. Still had the farms, but they were doing a lot more in industry with, like I said, vacations. So, yeah. I think there's some photographs of also some more conservative groups, Nebraska Amish. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about traveling to take photographs of them as well? Yes. Uh, Nebraska Amish, uh, they a uh, little more backward, not as progressive here as we may have in Lancaster County. Um, they still milk by hand. Uh, they sell their milk for, and have their own co-op where they sell their milk for cheese production because they still milk by hand uh, here in in Lancaster area, we use electric milkers, and it's uh, a little more sanitary, so to speak, not as much bacteria. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Belleville area is just a very picturesque community. But the group uh, intermarries only in their group, usually, or they have some connection and marriages in the Schwarzen Trooper groups. So they do tr do a little bit of traveling back and forth to, uh, to find spouses uh, in their locations. Uh, I believe there are photographs also of uh, the Amish in Florida on as the yes. Pinecraft. Pinecraft, yes. Can you tell us about traveling yes. there? Yeah, I only made one trip there. Uh, we had a we have a very close friend that uh, lived near there in the in the winter and invited me down. And uh, they were from all over the United States coming down to vacation, and. Uh, I was so amazed at how their three-wheel bicycles and how they got got around their postal system. Uh, they told me every year the post office threatened to shut the post office down, so they just send more mail every year to keep it open. So uh, uh, they were they were uh, very outgoing in a way. Uh, they played shuffleboard in the park all the time, and uh, they were they were on vacation just like we would go on vacation in Florida. Uh, when and how did your interest in photography begin? My interest in photography uh, probably began in the 1970s, and I worked with a lot of gentlemen in the printing industry who uh, 
were photographers, very good photographers. And then every day with my work, uh, I would see images coming across my desk, desk from professional photographers. And uh, I thought to myself, I thought I might enjoy this. So I did a lot of vacation photography and so on and took some classes to educate myself on photography and uh, used that when I was photographing the Amish uh, down the road. Um, outside of photographing the Amish, uh, did you do any other photography uh, projects? Did anything else interest you? Uh, somewhat. I did some weddings usually for friends and uh, close friends, relatives, um, but not too much. That was basically my niche after I got interested. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Was it always a hobby for you? Yes, mostly it was a hobby. Yeah. Now and then images would be marketed only because people would ask for them uh, to market them, yes. In terms of your career outside of your photography, um, would you like to tell us a bit about your experiences working in printing or early photo editing? Yes. Um, I retired in the printing industry after 39 years, and uh, my primary, when I started in printing, uh, printing companies, uh, I worked on the press room for the first eight years, and then they were phasing that type of printing out. So I had the opportunity to go do, get into the retouching department. I was called a dot etcher, where I worked on manipulating the image to make bluer skies, greener grass, uh, to uh, make executives uh, look younger uh, <laughs> by taking their double chins off crow's feet out from their eyes. So uh, all that retouching was done by hand with brushes. I had never gone to art school, but I had done a little bit of painting as a young person. So I worked in that field uh, for about... Uh, close to 30 years just doing retouching in the printing industry. And before I retired then, of course, which was 1999, uh, we were doing, 10 years prior to that, we were doing all digital retouching. So we stepped away from the brushes and it was more expedient doing it digital, with digital information. But I always enjoyed it. Never had a uh, problem getting up going to work because every day was, a, was fun and a challenge. You know, I, I liked it. Did any of these work experiences affect or influence your photography in any way? I think, I think by seeing images every day, your eye became keen on what you were looking for, subject matter, uh, how you would uh, get in a location where you could take that particular image. Of course, uh, there's so many factors uh, Im with images, uh, light, direction, uh, movement. So there's so many things you have to sort of calculate a little bit before you, you take those images. But uh, working in the industry was a, was a big thing to me, get me uh, coordinated to do what I was doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to move on to just some additional questions about um, what it was like uh, meeting with Amish people, photographing them, um, getting to know them. Um, in general, what was your relationship like with people Particularly in the local Amish community, that you the uh, it, it was it was so great. I, I just enjoyed it so much because they, uh, I think, that knowing I was a photographer, uh, we chatted about that, and I I think they respected what I did because I did not overstep any boundaries. If uh, there's any images of mine that are a uh, little bit close up on a face. They were usually taken from a very far away distance. I did not intrude. Uh, I was invited in. If I wasn't invited in, I didn't go there. Uh, I think most of the Amish, what I enjoyed so much was they have their own great sense of humor. And it really, uh, at times, the discussions we would have would just be so, so great after you were there that it was, it was such an honor to be be accepted in your community and be a part of that community. Um, so you sort of answered this by mentioning that you would sometimes use it, or often use a telephoto lens, um, but did you get permission sometimes to, to photograph Amish people? Um, and did anyone consider giving you permission to pose for any photographs? Uh, almost all images that I took uh, that were, I knew were going to be published, 
I would share that with them first and I would ask them how they felt about that. Uh, most of them felt they didn't want their face shown if it was sort of a posing type situation. Uh, there was several instances where I was approached to do uh, facial shots and I would not do them. I would do anything I could do to save that. And when those images went to, be, to the editors, uh, some refused them because they wanted a face. And uh, I did not do that. I mean, it's, they, they just didn't get them. I didn't send them because I felt in, in honor and the respect they gave me, I had to do that for them too, also. Um, here's some questions too, specifically about photographing children. Um, did you find that children had an understanding of what you were doing or did you ever explain um, your camera to them? Yeah. Sort of some of them were very inquisitive <clears throat> and asked me. Uh, some of the parents would stand back and allow them to ask questions about it, and, uh, and we chat a little bit about it. Uh, some seem to have now and then would almost have a fear. Yeah, I could I could tell maybe because of, of some families, uh, but in most cases, uh, there were families after I did photograph, and children were around would even ask me for for photographs. So it, there were some stages where I, I respected that and I, I gave images to them of their children, yes. Um, you talked about this a little bit, but um, were people generally more lenient about photos being taken of their children than they were of themselves? I would say yes, yes. Some still protected their children, but some were okay with it. And you could sense that. they. Uh, almost uh, enjoyed it. And like I said, they, they did ask me for those images sometimes, yes. Do you think that's because children aren't members of the church? I, I do believe that, yes, not members of the church. Um, and were there any specific events or like situations that you were not allowed to photograph or share the photos taken of? Uh, I would never, there are certain boundaries I, I just did not step over, such as, uh, I've been to Amish weddings, I'd never photograph there. Uh, funerals, never photograph there. Uh, many times that uh, when you're out in the public domain, uh, you, you can do certain things. But there are many times that I did not uh, feel comfortable even being, a, for example, an example of that would be, uh, I was contacted so for the nickel, about the nickel mine shooting. And uh, there was just no way I could, I could go there. I just could not do that. So uh, I didn't even leave the house. It was so tragic that uh, even though news media, I, I got some contacts about if I had images or would I get images and so on. So I continued to, to try to carry that through most of my work. So your photos span a, a large time period. Did you work with the same groups over the decades that you took these photos? At times, yes. Yeah, there were times that uh, uh, if you needed something, uh, they were somewhat receptive. Uh, I know I was looking for, uh, and there was some images for a uh, uh, telephone booth. And uh, I got uh, some help, you know, with that. So that was... Uh, something that we discussed a lot and a great sense of humor when we talked about it. I mean, they really had some, some really great uh, stories about that and what they would do, what they wouldn't do. But uh, the phone booth was really something I, I enjoyed, but that was one in particular. And you talked about this early too, uh, over the years, um, you know, traditions and, and such things changing over time. Um, did you notice any changes in tradition over the decades that you did work with these communities? Yes, very much. I, I'd say <clears throat> progressing, uh, for example, we, we have today the cell phone. You know, the younger people have it. Uh, the use of the phone, of course, was always in the phone booth was in, out in the barn. You know, and then uh, the businessman, he was allowed to have the cell phone because of his business. And then the kids have the cell phones. So that was one thing that really changed, changed it dramatically in a short period of time. 
the use of the cell phone. Also, I think the change was just starting back in the 60s with, with uh, the change in the milking process here, especially in Lancaster County. So that as you saw the diesel plants go onto the, on, onto the farms, and you saw windmills coming down because they were using generating their own electricity on the farm to, uh, to handle all the products that they were, the milk, uh, pumping water. So all those things were taking place, and they were the big changes that I saw moving forward. It was, it's, uh, uh, don't have cars yet, but they're, <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Hamilton selected a few photos to ask you some specific questions about, and we uh, kind of announced we could see them, so I'll let her um, show them. Yeah, so um, I have a few photos that I can show you, um, and just if you have any context or, um, memories or stories about the photos being taken you would like to share. Yes. Do you want me to hold this up? Or? You can add the photo. Okay, to okay. The video. Yeah. The photo of this little boy and girl was uh, on a farm where I was photographing around Baylor, and it was an evening, and uh, they brought, they were kind of not involved, but uh, when I was doing the photograph, they brought this, this container out and had pizza in for the gentleman doing the farm work, and the little girl kept sticking her hand in the box eating the pizza. And uh, it was so cute because her brother continued to hold the lid down and she kept sneaking her fingers in and eating the pizza. So it was just kind of something from a distance. I took this photo from a real far away and uh, it was just so interesting as a parent to see the, the actions of the children. I just enjoyed what I was seeing so much. And now um, for this one, um, this is the photo that you the first photo of many that comes up upon searching your name online. Um, do you have any reasons why you would think that this photo um, would be as popular as to allow that to happen? And do you recall anything about the case of this? Uh, I think this was basically taken uh, of, a, of a young lady. And at the time, I think we were trying to do uh, get some more photos on women's actions in the community. Uh, you know, they uh, usually see everybody thinks of their homemaker, but some of them are business people now today and so on. So you can see as they move through our society, uh, they are always carrying something, whether it's they're taking it to a function, taking it for, to, for dinner, even to their own home, or is it part of their business process? So I think that's really what the, the process was that day I was thinking about with, with the young lady coming out of the buggy with, uh, with her her wares. It's actually fitting because uh, Karen Johnson Weiner, I don't know if you know her, the, mm -hmm. uh, also a scholar of the Amish, she recently published a book on Amish women and we did end up using several of your photos yeah. in that book specifically uh -huh. of, of women yes. um, they were looking for them. So they did, you know, two yes. decades later ended up mm -hmm. being helpful that you did get those photos of oh, yeah. women doing a variety of things. Thank you. Yeah. And here's another photo of Children. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, I was again wondering about any context or stories, and um, if you know if the children were alone in dealing with these animals, or if there were adults not photographed. Yes, yeah, so as I remember, uh, there was adults in the area, but these little guys seemed to be able to handle the goat. I mean, they <laughs> they they were used to whether he was a pet or whether he was just part of being on the farm. But they 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 knew what they were doing. It wasn't their first time. And I just kind of enjoyed their interaction with an animal, as, as uh, we would even with our pets at home, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And now here's one last one. Um, uh, I've seen very few photos with adult faces this close up and full of you. Mm -hmm. um, and do you recall for this one why this photo was allowed? Um, the go had to be published even though there are so many. Yes, this, this was a public gathering and uh, I believe this was taken at Dr. Morton's auction and it was outside and they were playing shuffleboard. So it was between, as they would play at the mud sales, that they, as they would play four corner ball, here was adult men playing shuffleboard. And um, I was in the area and uh, they, they were just having a good time. They could have cared less whether I was there and, and took the photo, yeah. 
And if you see, there's a combination of Amish and Mennonite young men there playing shuffleboard and viewing the, viewing the action as it went on. Yeah. You do seem to have a lot of these photos at uh, public events, like auctions. Yes. And was that one of your favorite places to go to get Yes. Uh, I think the mud sales, uh, they were at ease with what was going on because they were involved in what, what they were there for, to, to bid or whatever they were doing. So uh, when I first started going to the mud sales, <clears throat> there weren't many people, some newspaper photographers, myself, uh, sold very few photographers. As years went on, it seems like everybody with a cell phone had, is taking pictures. Uh, the biggest change that I saw is uh, people not being respectful to the Amish. Uh, coming up right in their face. Uh, most of the things I did were at a distance. I was not intrusive. And uh, that, that's, that's the big change I've seen with photography and what's happening, especially at the mud sales. Yeah. Uh, we have a few questions just related to uh, the use of your photos and the collection over the years. Um, so we were curious about, I think you've, you've hinted at this, um, where you've seen them published, in, in print media, newspapers, have they been in any galleries? Um, I know you do. You did buggy calendars for a few years um, where they were used in advertising. So things that they've been used for over the years. Yes. Um, every year for about 12 years, I, uh, there was a, that was Amish published a buggy calendar every year and uh, they did that from my archives basically and every month we had it we were using a shot from snow in the winter down to summer uh, one through so uh, that was a great venture to do every year and that was Amish published to give away for his uh, Amish for his uh, supermarket okay and uh, so that was one place, but most of the time it was usually someone uh, needing an image for, for whatever it may be in telling a story. It was usually they wanted to tell a story. And uh, if it wasn't for Don Crable in particular, it was for maybe someone else writing a book on the Amish. Uh, as far as galleries, there were some galleries that uh, did sell my images. Uh, and it was usually the same format we chose what we thought might be for the tourists that were coming to Lancaster County. In newspapers in particular, I feel like you, you had a story that you told me when we, when we first met when you transferred the collection to the archives of working, I think it was related to some, some rollerblading photos. Yes, yeah, so I was, there was a, a rollerblading uh, group that came here and they had, uh, it was a tourist type thing, and they were rollerbladed in line skates. And they had an Amish, young Amish man that was skate with them. And uh, they tried to get photos, and they wanted to write a story in one of the big New York newspapers. And they sent their photographer here to Lancaster County, and he, I guess, approached the farm aggressively. And Dad said, not my son. And then I was contacted. And uh, I was able to talk to the young man, and uh, we went out a distance from the farm, and he skated for me, and uh, I took images, of, not of his face. And uh, he respected that. And when they were sent to the newspaper, the editor called me and wanted to know why. They wanted to edit with his face. And I told him, I can't do that. You know, I had one photo, it was a little side shot, I didn't even send to them out of respect for that young man. We had a conversation and uh, that, was, that was respect, respect on my part and him wanting to skate for me. He, he enjoyed that and did a great job. And he also, uh, being a young man, he uh, was very active in the community. He ran with the fire department and so on, so I'm sure his picture could have been taken with that. But uh, that was just part of the, the honesty I, I wanted to entail with him. I didn't realize the New York Times had sent a photographer ahead and had failed so miserably with the first attempt. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other publications or things that are, are memorable? I've seen your images out in the public. 
there's been a lot of magazines, articles written. Uh, there's uh, the, the uh, Sperry New Holland, uh, the, make the Baylor and so on. They, they did a couple publications uh, and they did them on the, uh, the produce market. And I had done quite a bit of photography around the produce market. And uh, they did several articles on that, I think two or three years apart. They did those. That was a real topic among the farm industry, you know, for them to to see that and discuss that. So over the years, there was all kinds of uh, technology. There was an electronic magazine. Wanted to know about the technology, even though they weren't in the electronic field or what the Amish were doing. So that uh, there's so many different avenues that they might have been published in over the years. I would say maybe ten or twelve. So have you received any awards or other commendations for your photography work over the years? No, not at all. Well, we're celebrating it now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Did you always plan to donate them? Uh, always had it in the back of my mind that someday, uh, with age, uh, where could they be used? Uh, where would someone be able to use them? And uh, so that's why I decided uh, when I did to, to mark them. I had a brief illness. I didn't know what my outcome would be, so that's why I decided to donate them to the college. How would you like to see them uh, be used even more in the future? Uh, hopefully they can, they can be enjoyed by people. Uh, they can tell a story uh, about the Amish. Uh, we see some, in some of those photos, you see some of, from the old. Uh, you may see some of the new. I know with uh, different projects with Don, uh, in particular, Don would be looking for the change. And I, as a photographer, wanted to see the old. So there was always that, that battle that I was, I was working with um, myself to see what was progressing. Uh, so I, hopefully in the future, they, uh, they can show uh, hopefully the respect that I, I did uh, give the Amish. And hopefully it'll be, in, be able to be enjoyed by people they're coming here to, to college to do research. So that would be my, my goal. Is there anything else you'd like to share about your experiences creating these photographs or just favorite memories? It, of, of it, was, it was a joy for me to really be able to do this. It was, uh, it was kind of a, uh, a great break from industry to go do that, to be out. And uh, what was, I think, really when I think back about it, I had a, a family and a wife that supported me doing this and encouraged me to do this. Uh, the time I was taking away from them, they were okay with. They allowed me to do it, and I'm so gracious uh, for that. I really do appreciate my family for, for encouraging me. Well, we really thank you for... You're welcome speaking with us today and again for donating this collection. It really does get mm -hmm. a lot of use here and it, it really is a tremendous collection. I think it Thank might you. be one of the largest collections of Amish photographs in the United States or, or I guess anywhere. Um, so if, if either of the students have any further questions? I don't think so, but I, I did want to tell you, um, I loved what you were saying on um, the whole concept of uh, modernization and seeing things change through the years. Um, Dr. Crable's new book that we were mentioning earlier, he had a whole chapter on uh, you know, learning and seeing the Amish change. So it was yeah. great to hear it um, mm -hmm. from someone else too, how the Amish mm -hmm. changed and modernized mm -hmm. and sort of uh, adapted mm -hmm. all their technology to sort of fit them. Mm -hmm. I believe Dr. Tr Crable calls it uh, Amish hacking. <laughs> yeah. But I, I love yeah. hearing it uh, that is. from a different perspective. Yes. I, I do have a couple of stories yeah. you can edit out, but you know, oh, yeah. if, if you, I think you may enjoy them, but oh, sure. uh, one was on the phone booth, a, a friend of mine, Amish friend that I knew pretty close. And uh, back then, just prior to cell phones, he had an Amish, he had the phone booth and he told me uh, in, when it was winter time and I said, how can I get a hold of you? He said, well, here's a phone booth number. That's how I called you <laughs> and everything. But he said, the problem we have is the phone booth is out and the dog house is right near there. And when the phone rings, he barks. So we know that the phone's ringing. But if it's bad weather, you just have to just let it ring because he will not, he, he doesn't like to come out of the house and bark because it's bad weather. So let the phone ring. He said a long time, maybe 20 rings, and he'll eventually come out and bark and let us know. But he's, he works with the weather, right? 
<laughs> uh, there was also a, another story when I was photo photographing a, a business. They built, they made uh, metal, a lot of metal fabrication. And when I was done photographing that day, uh, when you talk about photos, the owner of the company said, Dennis, could you take a couple pictures of my deer heads? He said, I have relatives in Indiana in here. He said, I'd like to send them some pictures. Could you get me some pictures? So I did. I was photographed that. But when we were leaving his business, uh, we walked out. There was four uh, scooters sitting along the business wall. And I said to him, I said, these scooters almost look heavy duty. I said, are these, you, you don't have children working here or anything? No, no. He said, they're very important pieces of equipment. I said, they are. He said, yeah, they're firefighting equipment. I said, firefighting equipment. He said, yes. He said, we all run with the fire department. There's four of us work here. So when the alarm goes off, we jump on the scooters and we go down the path and out to the highway. Otherwise, we'd have to jump in the buggy and it's a half a mile around. So he said, they are firefighting equipment. So. So we had some great, some great laughs and their, their look. And just recently, I had an Amish friend who uh, was chatting and uh, she, I was visiting and uh, she's a grandma as well as I am grandfather. And uh, with the new technology, uh, she now and then we, we would write. But she told me, she said, uh, she knew I had a cell phone. And she says, well, I'll just shoot you a text. She, she doesn't even have a phone. But that was, so she started laughing because that's what she's hearing from the younger people. They'll just shoot you a text. So they really have a great sense of humor sometimes. I enjoy it so much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you talking and sharing your stories. Mm. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you.